morning. Good morning. So Pastor Vicki and Richard are on vacation, and I am back from vacation, so you get me today. So we'll start with the announcements. First of all, of course, we want to thank everyone who made the craft show a big success. So thank you. Thank you, of course, yes, to especially to George Kyle, who unfortunately is so exhausted that he cannot be here this morning. But why don't we give him a big thank you and hope that he watches the live feed. <laughs> Thank you to George and everyone. We know it takes a lot of workers and everyone is grateful for the help. Um, Pastor Vicki and Richard Nay are on a short vacation this week, but Pastor Vicki will be back in the office on Tuesday. Some other announcements. This week, uh, we will be having chancel choir at 7, is that correct? and a men's breakfast at 8 a.m. on Thursday. There's a very special thing happening next Sunday. A quilt of valor is being presented to our own Dr. Gene Karosha, and in his honor, we are going to have a special coffee hour. So let's all please pan, plan to be there. And now I'm going to invite Betty Nathanson of our, schol our scholarship committee chair to present our Margate Community Church College scholarships with some other members of the scholarship committee. Just had to check to see if it's on. Good morning, one and all. I want to initially thank everybody in this congregation for being part of raising all of our children within this church. We put pebbles in the ponds and the ripples go out and we never know exactly where they're gonna go or who they're going to affect. Right now we have five of our six scholarship present uh, people here, uh, awardees, and they are just wonderful young people and they are continuing riding those ripples out, making pay it forward a reality for all of us in the community. So I'm gonna start with the first two. They're gonna stand and face you so you get to see their beautiful faces and understand that to begin with, we can't go over every accomplishment that these kids have. Summa cum laude, Dean's List several times over, awardships, National Honor Societies, special uh, ambassadors over and over and over again. So we're gonna talk about a little bit of where they're going and so on, but these kids are amazing. And we all have part in having them here with us. They're gonna go out and take us in their hearts with them, okay? First, we have Emma Carver. <laughs> Emma has had many successful endeavors already in her life and as a member of our congregation, she is an artist in several ways. She is a dancer and has performed here. She has done graphic designing and made her logo for her prom night. And she also plays a mean game of soccer. So all that is all to her benefit. This fall, Emma will be attending Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia, majoring in architecture. Our little ones, in our Sunday school, we'll always remember their Miss Emma, and we'll be looking forward to seeing her in the future. Here we go, Emma. <laughs> Next, we have Mary Wagner. <laughs> Starting in kindergarten, Mary has been a rock solid member of the Pay It Forward Club. She became a part of the local charity organization called Our Children Making Change. Its purpose is to teach and inspire children to help others and actively raise money for good projects. Mary has continued this kind of activity through our own church and in her high school years by becoming a social emotional learning ambassador and trained to help others in emotional distress. Isn't that something? This, look at this our ambassador. Soon she will be attending Villanova University, planning to major in finance. Okay, Mary.
Ellie Tavi. She graduated. <laughs> She graduated from Atlantic City High School this past June with a 4.1 GPA. She's an accomplished musician and songwriter who founded her own band, Ring Me Out, as well as played for the School of Rock House Band, with whom she performed at the Milwaukee, Wisconsin Summerfest, the world's largest music festival. Ellie has helped the Margate Community Church with pancake breakfast and by making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the homeless. She's volunteered in beach cleanups and has advocated for a litter-free community. Ellie will be attending the prestigious Berklee College of Music in Boston this fall. Her dream is to create her own record label and of course to continue playing bass. <laughs> Victoria Parks. Victoria graduated with honors from Ocean City High School in June. Her guidance counselor described her as a valuable leader in the classroom and a role model for her peers. Victoria has helped the MCC by volunteering for Pancake Breakfast, the Derby Fundraiser, the Live Nativity, and Child Care. She participated on the men's crew team at OCHS and says she's passionate about sports. Victoria plans to study sports medicine at Coastal Carolina University in South Carolina in the hopes of someday becoming a sports physician. Maya Swift will not be here today. Maya has been a very active member of our congregation, doing PPJ sandwiches making, putting together hyd hydrant cakes for the homeless, and participating in our Sunday school program. She has a, she is so a scientific degree from Atlantic Cape Community College and is transferring to, to James Madison University in Virginia to pursue a degree in literature and writing. Her future goal is to teach on the college level. Okay, James. James Swift. James is a lifeguard and inventor and he tries to keep the beaches clean. Okay. I've got to give a hand to Martha. She has such stage fright, but she did a beautiful job. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Sit down. Okay. You're welcome. So you see, we have these beautiful people that we all help to raise, and let's all become part of this Pay It Forward Club, just like they are. I mean, they're into so many different wonderful things, and I'm sure you guys are, besides being in the church, but carrying that, that uh, attitude and commitment forward is so important. So all five of you stand up, and Maya's working somewhere, so let's all give them a hand round of applause. Okay. So next we're going to give Martha a second to come back up here to join us for the intro, right, Martha? <laughs> I think she's uh, overcome her stage fright and is hoping to have more presentations to give this morning. <laughs> Thank you. 
Please join me in the responsive call to worship. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Every day we will bless God and praise his name forever. God fulfills the desires of our hearts. Our mouths will speak the praise of God who gives to us abundantly. Let us worship God. You may be seated and please join me in the responsive prayer printed in your bulletin loving Lord you give the gift of wisdom but we trust the wisdom of others you give the gift of knowledge but we would rather play intellectual games you give the gift of faith but we often don't feel like it's enough you give the gifts of healing and miracles, but we need our healing now, and we want our miracles to be dramatic. You give us a prophetic word and a discerning spirit, but we are content to live in the ordinary and tolerate what violates your character. Dear God, forgive the wrongs we do and awaken your gifts within us. Lead us on a path of discovery and renewal, that our gifts would be used to bless our, our families, our communities, and our church. Amen. And now, Betty is going to handle our time with the children in Pastor Vicki's absence. just want to let you know that the children have been working on learning parables of Jesus, the stories that Jesus has told us for how many thousands of years by using Legos and building different little scenes. And we've taken pictures of everything that they built. And at the end of the summer, we're going to be putting a bulletin board up and they are going to be uh, uh, showing you what they've learned over the summer. So there's one model that we have 
that Leo has made, and it was during the lesson of letting your light shine, okay? This is a lamp that the oh. <laughs> This is a lamp that Leo made to show his light. And those are very, very important things to do. Do you remember what the light means? Letting your light shine? What? Helping others. Helping others. And actually doing it, right? Not just saying it, but doing it. Doing good things, OK? These two cherubs, are they were already this morning, God bless their mother, uh, at a surfing contest at 7 o'clock this morning. Well, well so, Oh, okay. So here you are. We're good. So uh, that's what I was told was this morning. Anyway, they are going to, they learned about the Good Samaritan. They've learned about um, the uh, prodigal, they're going to learn today about the prodigal son and all with the different Legos, learning how to tell the stories that Jesus taught us. And all of it revolves around, just like with these, our scholarship kids, ripples in the pond carrying it forward. This is what they're learning now about how God and Jesus have taught us to carry that forward and to learn to love one another no matter how we do it, okay? So we're going to go back to the library today and make some more models, and you'll get to see the pictures of all of their things at the end, okay? All right, let's go, guys. For our time of prayer together, we have the following people on our list. David McCann, Ken Heck, Patricia Zappone, Cynthia Mario, Neil Gamble, Marilyn, Judy, Ian, Fran, Tim, Dorothy and Dawn, Carolyn, Roe, Don Green, who is Barb Kyle's father, Eric Laporta and Joe Mello, Linwood Chatton, all in need of organs for organ transplants, Dylan, Gerald, and Dana. Are there any other joys or concerns to share with the congregation this morning? Yes. A prayer for Doris coming home from the hospital. Yes. Pamela and Daryl recovering from cancer. Arthur and Stuart uh, with fighting cancer, fighting cancer. Any others? Okay, so let us, um, let us pray together. God of mercy and grace, by your spirit, your word lives in this assembly of your servants brought together for the purpose of searching for your will. Listen now, not to the logic of our prayers, but to the hope of our belief that you have indeed chosen to listen to us, to listen very carefully to our words, to our thoughts, to the inner growings that are too deep to be uttered. We come before you with grateful hearts, thankful that before you, you all human power pales, thankful that you have not hidden yourself from us, but that you have revealed yourself to us in Christ Jesus. Thankful that you have called each of us by name. Thankful that you call us out and call us the church. Thankful that you show us the face of Jesus in the least among us. Lord, may our actions speak louder than our words as we strive to praise you. Again today, Lord, we pray that you will move amid the decision makers of our world. Breathe upon them your spirit of peace that they may lead all your children in paths of justice and safety. We pray for our church, O oh God, make us strong, not to give us pride, but that we might serve you more faithfully. Make us open to your spirit working in each one of us and working among all of us, that we might be for many and for each other, the body of Christ here in this place and in the places we live and work and play. Bind us together, Lord. We know, Lord, that you have already heard the concerns of our family of faith. Hear now those matters that lie deeply and silently in our hearts. Go
grant us your peace. Merciful God, we ask that you would bring healing to the sick, bring comfort to the grieving, bring friends to the lonely, bring rest to the weary, bring calm to the anxious, bring food to the hungry, bring place to the homeless, bring forgiving to the estranged, bring peace to the conflicted, bring joy to the young, bring satisfaction to the old, and bring thankfulness to us all. And now let us join in the Lord's Prayer by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we will receive the offering.
Generous God, we bring our tithes and offerings to you. Bless and use them to accomplish your will through this church. Direct our ministry and spending to go to spreading the gospel and your love where you lead us. And bless the works of our hands. Amen. Please be seated. And please join me in the responsive reading of our scripture lesson today, Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is God that made us and we are his. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to God. Bless God's name, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. His faithfulness is to all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Pastor Vicki left me something to read to you today. And she said that this is one of the most meaningful and beautiful poems that she knows. It's entitled The Touch of the Master's Hand by Myra Brooks Welch. It was battered and scarred, and the act auctioneer thought it hardly worth his while to waste time on the old violin. But he held it up with a smile. What am I bid, good people, he cried. Who starts the bidding for me? One dollar, one dollar, do I hear two? Two dollars, who makes it three? Three dollars once, three dollars twice, going for three, but no. From the room far back, a gray-haired man, gray man came forward and picked up the bow. Then wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening up the strings, he played a melody pure and sweet, as sweet as an angel sings. The music ceased and the auctioneer, with a voice that was quiet and low, said, what now am I bid for this old violin as he held it aloft with its bow? One thousand, one thousand, do I hear two? Two thousand, who makes it three? Three thousand once, three thousand twice, going and gone, said he. The people cheered, but some of them cried, we do not quite understand. What changed its worth, swift came the reply, the touch of the master's hand. And many a man with a life out of tune and battered and scarred with sin is auctioned cheap to the thoughtless crowd, much like the old violin, a mess of pottage, a glass of wine, a game and he travels on. He's going once and going twice, he's going and almost gone. But the master comes and the foolish crowd never can quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that's wrought by the touch of the master's hand. And I took the liberty of writing a couple notes to go with this poem um, and to connect it with our intro. The classic poem has also been made into a song of the same name, The Touch of the Master's Hand by Wayne Watson. And in both the poem that I read and the song, what was thought to be a worthless old violin is placed up for auction. There are no takers for the battered and scarred old violin until an old master steps up and begins to play it. The violin then draws a high price because of the beautiful music produced by the master. The value wasn't in the violin as much as it was in what the master could do with it. And there's nothing more worthless than a handful of dirt, yet God used the dust of the earth to make mankind. From dust, God is able to take a human being and make of him or her whatever pleases him. That lesson was driven home to the prophet Jeremiah in a powerful way when he felt led to make a visit to the potter's house. In Jeremiah chapter 18, Jeremiah went to the potter's house and a lump of clay was being spun on a wheel shaped by the potter's hand. The potter was not making a work of art as we may think of it today. Instead, he was making a vessel to serve a purpose in someone's home. 
As the potter spun the clay in ways he could only know, he sensed some weakness or a flaw that would hinder the pot's usefulness. He took the clay, mashed it together, and started again until his all-knowing hands, the clay was then serving the purpose he intended. Being remolded and reshaped is not necessarily a pleasant experience, but it is necessary if the clay is to be used the way the potter intended. And the hymn that the choir sang as our introit, Have Thine Own Way, Lord, says, Thou art the, art the potter, I am the clay. And as Jeremiah pondered what he was witnessing as the potter worked with the clay, he gained prophetic insight into God's work with people and nations. There is a critical difference, however, between human beings and lumps of clay. We have the option of choosing how will we respond to the work of the potter in our lives. The Lord said through his prophet Jeremiah, like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you, my hand in Israel. Unlike clay, we have the option of refusing to cooperate with the one who shapes our lives for his purpose. If we turn away from God's will, we will miss his best for us. We are still clay in God's hands, but choosing the option to turn to him with our whole hearts can fill us with the joy of being a vessel totally useful to him. Mold me and shape me after thy will, while I am waiting, yielded and still. Amen. please join me with the responsive benediction response printed in your bulletin and then we will hear the benediction response from the choir let our lives witness to Christ's love let our words bring reconciliation let our thoughts be of peace let our touch bring healing let our actions count for justice let us be signs of hope and beacons of joy as we leave, may God's blessing go with us. Amen. Amen.